Hello, friends of the Museum of South Texas History. My name is Francisco Guajardo. I'm the CEO of the museum, and I want to tell you why this jailhouse rocks. We'll take you inside in a little bit to see evidence of that, but first, I just want to show you. This place here that was built in 1909, 1910, the oldest building in this community and one of the oldest in South Texas, is on the National Register of Historic Places. How cool is that? This place here is also an official historical medallion site. This is on the register of Texas historical sites. Now, this place here is also in a very vulnerable, vulnerable area. You know, this, this part of Edinburgh here is kind of in a bowl. And so we have to be super vigilant with keeping this place safe, especially from the water, because we're just a few feet above the water table. And so we have a pump that runs around the clock to remove the water so that the water won't seep up. We're vigilant, we love this building, we care for this building, and we want, we want you to help us care for it. Help us understand how this place rocks. I'm gonna take you inside now. So many more reasons why this jailhouse rocks. For example, check this out. This exhibit is called La Cárcel de 1910, the 1910 jail. Come on, like who's got accents in, the, in, the, in, the, in an exhibit? We do. This jailhouse rocks. I'm going to tell you a few stories here as I show you some pictures, historical photographs, all of which are from our archives. So this place was built in 1909, 1910, but it ceased to exist as a jail by 1922 because the population was too big for this, the size of this jail. This place then functioned as as a fire station, as a city hall, as a police station, as a community house. This place has been really, really important for the community. I'm gonna take you into the community room now and show you a few things. Here we, we feature a number of characters, people who were movers and shakers of the time, you know, the Klausners and the Sprague's and the Chapins. The town was named after Chapin, but then you went and killed somebody, so they had to change the name of the town to something else, it became Edinburgh. But these are the folks who would put up land for the original auction of the town site of Chapin. This place here, in this community room, we have a number of civics type lessons. The first one, for example. We have you vote. So we can change this, by the way. In this particular case, we're voting on whether you believe in the death penalty or not. So Tony, I'll give you a, a, a token here and you're gonna vote there, you know, before you leave. Do you believe in the death penalty? Yes. Do you not believe in the death penalty? No. We give you a chance to vote as is the birthright of every American voting. What about jury selection? Well, we have a jury selection civics lesson. So in this jail, somebody was brought into this jail named Abraham Ortiz in 1912 because of a crime, a murder that was committed. Abraham Ortiz would then be, be put through a trial later in, in 1912, and then would be sentenced to hang in 1913, May of 1913. So the question is, who was on the jury? What did the, what did the jurors look like? Well, here's a lesson here. Could you be on the jury if you were this guy? Could you be on the jury if you were this guy? How about this guy? Well, no, no, and yes. How about her? No. How about him? No. How about... So you come and you read what the criteria was to be on a jury. You can read about who can vote. You can read about who could have been on a jury. You can read about the jurors in the Abraham Ortiz case. You can read about the Census Bureau. I'm sorry, the census, how it looked in 1920 of the people here in Hidalgo County. And you read it in Spanish and you read it in English. Everything is translated here in this museum. A cool civics lesson in the community room. We go to the jail office now. I'm gonna show you some really cool things here. Another set of reasons why this jailhouse rocks. Here we have a phone of the period, 1910s. We have a phone book of the period, 1910s. We have all kinds of artifacts like the jail docket. Why were people brought to jail? Well, it says here, who was brought in, when they were brought in, and for what? Like this one guy, for lunacy. This other guy, for theft. This other guy for burglary. This other guy for carrying a pistol. That's why people were brought to jail. An advertisement of the city of Chapin that went out all over the country because you know this place was trying to attract people to come and invest in the place. And also to have this dream you know, of grandeur, of making it big. 
this place was such a place. This jailhouse, when you came in here, they took your stuff. What are the, what are the confiscated items right here? All of these in this jailhouse. Really cool feature about this jailhouse. The very first accession piece was this. 19, a 38, a Colt 38 revolver. That, that revolver there, that pistol, was carried by Pancho Garza to assassinate John Klausner, the county sheriff. The county sheriff that I told you about here. Yeah, all this stuff here, this was his desk. John Klausner, who brought Nemesio Cortina from the San Juan plantation to be the jailer. John Klausner who brought Cortina's wife, Marcela, to be the cook. John Klausner was a brilliant entrepreneur, but he was also a lawman who was notorious. So people had a design to get John Klausner. Twice there were assassination attempts on his life, and one of those times in 1898 was by this guy named Pancho Garza, who had that 38 revolver. And so the museum has it. In 1968, that museum, this museum got that revolver, the very first accession Artifact. Kind of a cool story, eh? Tony, I'm going to take you upstairs so you can see some things upstairs. So much more to see down here, clearly. But as you take your first steps up these, these stairs, Tony, this is the original stairway, by the way. I'm going to ask you, Tony, to, to point the camera at this. This is what the jail looked like just three years ago, in 2018. In the Save Our Jail campaign of the museum and the community, the museum was able to raise $3 million to be able to restore this place into its majesty. So this is a gorgeous place. It just rocks. It's historical. It's cultural. You know, it's owned by the community. There's so many reasons to really celebrate this place and to really celebrate our history. There's so much stuff here. So much stuff. The story I told you about Abraham Ortiz, I'm going to give you a little bit more, more, more depth and texture to that story. Abraham Ortiz would be brought into this place here. So you see this, the original door right here. This is where Abraham Ortiz was brought in 1912. In 1913, he, would brought, he was brought from this corner cell into the death watch cell. And then he was taken into the gallows. I'm exhausted just telling this story because it's such a dramatic story. But if you follow me, Tony, you'll see I was brought in here. This is the hanging room. This is the hanging room. So here's the story of Abraham Ortiz. Abraham Ortiz was a bad guy. He and a buddy of his were kind of like lurking in the brush, you know, south of Far at Capote Ranch when this couple came and they jumped on this couple. They killed the man and they took the woman. The woman would escape, alert the authorities. They would catch Abraham Ortiz and they would bring him into this jail. And so then he was put through a trial and then he was found guilty of murder. The details are not conclusive, you know, which really raises the question of was Abraham Ortiz actually tried by a jury of his peers. He wasn't, actually. But the fact is that he was tried, he was convicted, and then he was hanged right in this room. In 1913, May of 1913, this is where the hanging happened. And Polo Jackson was the, the worker here at the time that he lifted the trap door. And then Abraham Ortiz would fall to his death. And there was an audience out here. The public came to see this public viewing of a hanging in 1913. It's a very dramatic story. One of the reasons why this jailhouse rocks in, 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 uh, in kind of a, what's, what's the word here? Um, dubious way. You know, so, ooh, do we like that? Well, well you know, this, this is what happened. This is what you call the, right up here, what does it say? This is the cell block gallery. This is the largest room in this place. People who lived here, firemen in the 1930s, when they became more elderly, like in the 70s and 80s, they used to tell stories about how they used to sleep here and they used to hear the clanking of chains late at night. Now there is like this lore out there in the community, you know, where the question is begged, is this jail haunted? Is there a ghost in this jail? Well, we don't know if there is. We haven't seen a ghost here, but some people claim that Abraham Ortiz, the spirit of Abraham Ortiz, like hovers in this place. And the stories of those firemen, of the clanking of the chains, is actually quite compelling, and it's interesting, it's intriguing, and it's juicy as well. Another reason why this whole jailhouse rocks. This whole Faces de la Frontera exhibit in the Cell Block Gallery, the Faces de la Frontera exhibit 
has mostly anonymous photographs. So around the walls, you see anonymous photographs, but we feature four people by name. Emilia, Junior Ramirez. Emilia was born 1901, 1902, went to Edinburgh High School, graduated in 1919, kept a diary, and she wrote about the wintry days of the Spanish influenza in Edinburgh. We have that in our archives. Very cool. Nathaniel Jackson came from the Jackson family that was a mixed race family. So his uncle had actually, a white man in Alabama, had married a, a woman who had been born into slavery. They had their mulatto children, and then they escaped Alabama to come to South Texas where they would set up an outpost on the Underground Railroad in South Texas. Runaway slaves, you know, fugitive slaves, they would come down here and the Jacksons would help them get into Mexico, where Mexico had abolished slavery by 1829, 1830. We feature two other people that I'm going to show you. So these two other people, one of them is a matriarch from Stark County, Silvestra Peña Perez. So she and her husband ran La Mulada Ranch, and we also feature Juana La Mia, a rough rider with Theodore Roosevelt in 1898 in the Spanish-American War. The Alamia family continues to live here in Edinburgh and in South Texas. They were from Brownsville and Matamoros. And so there's so many stories here about, you know, South Texas and so much evidence here that would suggest, I think, in a very kind of, you know, anecdotal way that this jailhouse just rocks.